Welcome to the February 14th, 2021 online worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Brown. I'm the pastor at Fort Hill. Jacob Dishman, our director of music ministries, will be sharing in music today. And Bev Connor, a member of our church, will be sharing in the reading of the scripture lesson. As we worship today, we do so on Transfiguration Sunday. This is the Sunday that precedes Lent and follows the last Sunday after the Epiphany when the Magi followed the light to worship Jesus in Bethlehem. And it's also a time when we remember the beginning of the journey of Jesus to the cross of Calvary. You'll find an order of worship attached to the means by which you are observing worship today. And I invite us to join together in the call to worship. The Lord is sovereign. Let the people tremble in awe. God is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. join together in the prayer. Holy God, upon the mountain you revealed our Messiah, who by his death and resurrection would fulfill both the law and the prophets. By his transfiguration, enlighten our path so that we may dare to suffer with him in the service of humanity and so share in the everlasting glory of him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with him anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Eternal Moments 
the birth of a child, the death of a loved one, a sunrise over the ocean, a sunset over the mountains, eternal moments, those times when we understand what the essence of life is about, new life made possible through forgiveness, hope made real through the presence of love, the Mount of Transfiguration, the Cross of Calvary, faith in Jesus. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. It is the last Sunday after the Epiphany when we remember the Magi's journey following the light to worship Jesus. It is also the Sunday preceding the season of Lent when we remember Jesus' journey through the darkness to the cross of Calvary. Today is the Sunday when we, as followers of Jesus, reflect on the eternal moment when Peter, James, and John saw Jesus revealed in the glory of God's light and love. It was an eternal moment that can only be described by the brilliance of Jesus and by the sh cloud that overshadowed the Peter, James, and John as they were instructed to listen to Jesus and as they saw Jesus only. It was a moment when Peter, James, and John were invited to understand the essence of life as they saw Jesus only. Eternal moments, the birth of a child, the death of a loved one, sunrise over the ocean, sunset over the mountain. Eternal moments, those times when we understand what the essence of life is about. New life made possible through forgiveness Hope made possible through the presence of love. The Mount of Transfiguration, the Cross of Calvary, faith in Jesus. The Man Who Moved a Mountain is the story of Bob Childress' life. He grew up in the early part of the 20th century in the mountains of Virginia and Floyd, Virginia. A mountain man, he was accustomed to hard living, to drinking and fighting. Bob met a woman, young woman named Pearl, and they fell in love, and they eloped and went to a Methodist parsonage in the valley to be married. It was through Pearl's gentle encouragement and love that Bob was able to begin dealing with the fighting and the drinking that defined his life. Eventually they had two children, a son and then a daughter, and Bob found church to being a part of his life. And all seemed right with the world as Bob and his family would attend church and worship as Bob's life became ordered. Well, just as the COVID-19 pandemic, the coronavirus has hit us in this time, this was the time when the Spanish flu hit as well. Pearl contracted the flu and she died within two days of having the flu. It was devastating, a devastating time, a devastating experience, a devastating moment for Bob and his two young children as they grieved the loss of his wife and their mother. Richard Davids, the author of The Man Who Moved a Mountain, writes about the time and that followed. 
David writes, Bob felt paralyzed. He was worn out, body and spirit. Pearl had given the joy, the sense of worth that kept him from aimlessness and drunkenness. Now, here he was with two motherless babies. He went up into the woods. He thought of drink and its gentle forgetfulness. He thought of suicide. Up until this moment in his life, he generally had gotten what he wanted by persuading or working or fighting. Now he was hopeless. The first night he lay in bed between his baby girl, a one and a half year old, and his son, a three and a half year old. The boy whispered, Papa, are you there? Yes, son. Let me feel you. Bob reached out and put his strong arm and laid it on his son's covers. Then his daughter woke up and began to cry for her mother. And the boy joined in. Bob patted them both, trying to comfort them. And then he began to cry. And the children dropped off to sleep. More weary than reverent, Bob found himself repeating the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, he began dispiritedly, and then he stopped at the, at the line, Thy will be done. Not his own will, which till now he had somehow always been served, but thy will, God's will. Perhaps when his own will could do nothing, he should let God do the planning a surge of peace came over him, and he slept. Eternal moments, the birth of a child, the death of a loved one, a sunrise over the ocean, a sunset over the mountains. Eternal moments, those times in life when we understand what the essence of life is about. New life made possible through forgiveness, hope, made possible through the presence of love, the Mount of Transfiguration, the cross of Calvary, faith in Jesus. Peter, James, and John found themselves in an, in an eternal moment. There was no question about the presence of God that was shining through Jesus. It was such a wondrous experience that Peter suggested that they should live in this moment, this eternal moment, that they should reside here for eternity. As he suggested to Peter, as he suggested to Jesus, let us build three booths, one here for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. What Peter was suggesting was that they should never leave this moment in which they found themselves but that's not the message of Transfiguration Sunday. That is not the message Jesus was sharing. That was not what God meant when he told Peter, James, and John to listen to Jesus. Staying in the present moment is not what eternal moments are about. Eternal moments are about moving forward in life by moving forward and understanding God's presence in life. Let me repeat that again. Eternal moments are not about residing in the present moment. They are about moving forward into the future, understanding God's presence in life. The purpose of the Mount of Transfiguration was to help Peter, James, and John understand that 
Faith in Jesus is faith that moves us forward in life. It is understanding that it was, it was not only the light that got the Magi to Jesus that was part of the eternal moment they were experiencing. It was also the upcoming darkness where Peter, James, and John would follow Jesus from the Mount of Transfiguration to the cross of Calvary. Jesus wanted them to understand that eternal moments are not only found on mountaintops, they're also found in the valley, not only in light, but also in darkness. Eternal moments, times of both lightness and dark, when we see Jesus only. In her book, Praying Our Goodbyes, Joyce Rupp tells of a friend who wrote a letter to her about lessons she had learned through three years of illness. Lessons about God's presence in eternal moments. There is some resistance in me when dealing with my own pain and grief and relating it to God. I have had two experiences of God being with me in my suffering of these past three years. Part of me felt so abandoned that I didn't want any part of hearing about God. The other part of me knew God's care, love, and concern of those around me. It was in that light that I began discovering the responsibility I carried for my own life and that God wasn't going to change events for me, but would help me grow through them. Eternal moments. Those times when we understand what the essence of life is about. About the essence of new life made possible through forgiveness. About the essence of hope made possible through the presence of love. About the essence of life found on the Mount of Transfiguration about the essence of life found in the darkness of the path that leads to Calvary, about faith in Jesus. On this Transfiguration Sunday, whether you're standing on the mountaintop or walking through the valley, God is calling you to see Jesus only and to listen to Jesus only as you grow through the eternal moments of your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. I invite us to join together in a time of prayer in response to the good news today. I will be offering various times of prayers and suggestions. And following each time, I will say, Lord, in your mercy. And our response together will be, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Oh God, on this Transfiguration Sunday, as we recall how Peter, James, and John saw the light of your presence through Jesus, we ask that we might also see the light of your presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. God, on this day, as we ponder what it means to live in the eternal moments of our lives, we ask that you would grant us faith, hope, and love to walk with Jesus 
not only on the Mount of Transfiguration, but on the path to Calvary. Lord, in your mercy, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. We pray this day for those who face times of wilderness, who face questions, who face challenges. We ask God that your presence will be with them and that we might share the light of your love through our faith. Lord, in your mercy, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh God, this day for those who suffer from illness, especially from the coronavirus. We pray for the faithfulness of your church. We pray for the faithfulness of witnessing to the presence of God in all the eternal moments of life. Lord, in your mercy, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. And we ask God that on this Transfiguration Sunday, that we might know what it means to see Jesus only and to hear your voice through him. And we ask, O oh God, that you would hear our voice together now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on this Transfiguration Sunday, may you live in the eternal moment of God's love as you move forward in all the moments of your life. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.